Hey everyone. Hi. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Allison Rosen is your new best friend. I'm very excited to bring in my guest in a moment. But first, I must chat with my producer, Tony Thaxton, aka the self-professed bad boy of podcasting. Hello. Hello. How's it going? I know that you hate when I say self-professed, and it makes me do it more. I'm sorry. No, I don't. I don't even hate it, and I wasn't even going to comment on it. This I was like, we comment on it too much. We'll, I know. We'll let things let things go. You know, I'm, we I'm, do. Maybe in 2021 we get a new shtick. What do you think? Or 2022? I mean, <laughs> Maybe late to do it in 2021. Yeah, I mean, we could try and squeeze one in for 2021. Why not? No, I'm not ready. Okay. So we got to bring in our guest. I can't wait to talk to him. But quick question for you, Tony. Um, Mm -hmm. As you know, last night we recorded a Thursday episode and Mm -hmm. uh, I brought up a topic I'm always fascinated about how people shower, shower routines, excuse me, all that. Now, my husband, Daniel, said to me this morning that he felt that it got almost pornographic. Did you feel that way? And I know I'm putting you in an uncomfortable (laughs) position because uh, I do pay your bills, not your bills, your checks. I pay you, <laughs> so I know I know you're in an uncomfortable position. But I'm what your no, thoughts? I'm not, I'm not uncomfortable. Um, no, I, I I know what he's saying, but because it, it got a little detailed at times. But like <laughs> I I would I think calling it pornographic is a little is a little far. There was no. Um, Did you feel it got clinical? No, I think it was just people giving some in-depth descriptions. There was no, uh, it wasn't anything too graphic. Yeah. There was no penetration of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like, I think when I discussed giving the water access, I think that's where it maybe crossed a line. I don't know. <laughs> I like that you just go ahead and just go there again, though. When, when talking about being concerned, then you throw out the thing you were the most concerned about. Oh, no, I'm not concerned. He was, I think he I know, had a, right, a reaction, right. but that's his business. Yeah. He doesn't have to listen. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, look, you know, it's, it's yin and yang. There's me just blabbing too much. And then there's him, the voice of restraint occasionally that I like to ignore. Anyway, enough of that. Things are good with you, Tony? Eh, good enough. Cool. Yeah. That's what we aim for. Yeah, you know, it's it's. This isn't about me today. All I'm, right. just, I'm just giving you my my real answer. Your and, real uh, answer. You know, we don't have to get detailed because we got a guest waiting. So okay, it's, it's a tease for everybody. Yeah. Well, listen. If at some point you feel compelled to let us know what's standing in between good enough and great, you just get right on that mic and you just tell us okay all right i mean good enough might even be pushing it but you know we'll we'll uh we'll move on oh are you at a you've been better been better the holidays are hard yeah. did i not yeah. discuss feeling like i was getting teabagged by the holidays like very recently <laughs> and a lot of people also feel that way and yeah and as you know i love christmas but uh the last last couple have been real tough for the old fax man <laughs> <laughs> and uh hoping this one's better but uh, yeah. we'll see yeah are you um going home? Yes, it's a complicated thing. Uh, I might be doing a big old road trip with Bentley. Oh wow! So, yeah, nice. To then take him to who's going to uh, take care of him while I'm on tour. Oh, and you don't know yet. Oh no! Oh no! You're going to take him to the person yes, who's taking yes. care of him while you're on tour. Yeah, I think um, he's going to watch him. Yeah. Well, you're going on a big tour, and. Uh, I could imagine getting every all of the ducks in a row is stressful. It's not even so much that. It's it's more just I'm ready for it, you know. This is it's been a it's been a tough time and I'm ready for I need a change right now. Yeah. I could just use a uh yeah, something to break up the monotony. And so I'm very excited for that. But Me talking about how I shower there. isn't enough of enough razzle dazzle in your day? Well, you know, there are there's bright spots here and there. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I think I uh I think a lot of people are feeling that. Yeah. Uh especially sure. with just or because of the way we've been living for the last over I forget how many months it is. It feels like two years. Yeah, I mean it's almost two years. More or less, yeah. Yeah. But you know what's gonna be a bright spot in your day today, Tony? Meeting our guest. He is a true multi hyphenate 
author, New York Times bestselling author, content creator with millions of followers, an entrepreneur, humanitarian, a guy who has so many plants. I am jealous of his ability to keep them alive. His latest book, I'm holding it up, youtube.com slash Allison Rosen. Um, if you're just listening, but you want to see the book, go to youtube.com slash Allison Rosen. Uh, it's called House Fires. Please put your hands together for Connor Franta. Some refer to me as the professional day brightener. So that's, well, that's today. Let's do it. Tony. That's the goal. Tony, get ready. He's here to brighten your day. You're All lucky. Right. It's ready. me. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Connor, on the scale of like uh, good, not great to great? I'm fine. <laughs> I feel like it's I'm fine. I, I'm I don't know. I'm I. In in comparison to how a lot of people are doing, I just think I'm fine. Like mm-hmm. it's not great, it's not bad. It's just it's just it, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It is. You um do you identify as an introvert? Um, I'm somewhere in between. I definitely have heavily introverted tendencies, but like after th- like not th- not like three specifically, but after a few days of doing nothing with nobody, I get the itch that I need to I need to see people. Mm-hmm. So, so how have you what- handled that in the pandemic? In the beginning, it was very weird. Like I think I I think I was con- I conditioned myself over the years because I've always worked from home. You know, the luxury of yeah. creating your own content and being a content creator of sorts is that you control your workflow and most of it takes place in your home. So like everyone has been getting, you know, fancy Zoom setups, lighting equipment, cameras, and everything to work from home. Bitch, I've already had that. <laughs> I've been here. You invented been- that. I've been doing this pandemic for a decade, minus the illness, <laughs> minus the death and the terror. Well, a little bit of terror. But so for, for me, it was almost nothing new. But then as soon as, you know, there were like forced lockdowns and the fear of actual death added onto it, then it started getting a little bit anxious for me. I'm, a, I'm an anxious person. So mm-hmm. that was more where I, I started getting stressed was just like the actual anxiety of it all. Right. How are you doing with anxiety currently? Good. Um, I think I manage it pretty well. Uh, I feel like I talk about it ad nauseum, but um, I I run to manage my stress. So I I work out and do walks, runs, and and general fitness. And that seems to, you know, manage my my good chemicals and my bad chemicals and my good thoughts and my bad thoughts. It's crazy that it could be as simple as running. I I bet it's not as simple as running, though. I mean, I think I'm lucky in that it, it... it's gotten to that point. It did take, you know, years of practice, years of therapy and years of self-discovery to get to the point where I think running is now the part that keeps me at that certain threshold. But, but now it is almost that simple. I feel like if I go for a run every morning, my dopamine and my serotonin are sky high and they can, there's like almost no way for me to go below the floor. Mm -hmm. Like I just feel like I'm always standing on my two feet or, or flying a little bit high. (laughs) <laughs> right. So something I was wondering when I was um con- it feels weird to say consuming your content. That almost feels like uh <laughs> there's something cannibalistic about that. But when I yeah, was It's a little uh, disgusting. Yeah, I'm so I've been <laughs> I've been so disgusting ever since for years hey, I, now. I was heavily invested in the shower conversation. <laughs> I wanted to chime in about six times. I'm like, what was the description here? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you. So, okay. <laughs> I have recently... Like, you don't know what you've done. Yeah, you oh. don't... Are you... Listen, I'm gay. We all know, like, I, I hear the most disgusting, vile things every day. <laughs> and so you just go for it. Okay. So I have recently gotten on TikTok and been watching. I'm, I know I'm very late to it. I just felt like I was not a fan of Instagram reels and I felt like I don't need an app that's exclusively reels. And then I, you know, got there and I was like, oh my God, everything that people say about it is true. It is addictive and creative and blah, blah, blah. So I somehow ended up watching this woman who is like, um, you know, if you, if you didn't have a mom to teach you these, even though I, I do have a mom, but you know, she teaches you like all these lessons about things like you should have learned growing up. And one of them is how to shower. And she explains that you should have one hand for your front bits and one hand for your back. And 
So for, you know, one for me, one for my vagina, one for my butt. And when you're in the shower, like make sure. And she doesn't use that word because I guess you can't use. Right. You can't use. It's. I, Bad there's words a, there's a line. I have no idea which words you can and can't use. And I'm always walking a line of like, now I feel like like a 12 year old idiot that's just not trying to say a swear word, even right. though it's what I would normally say. She, I have no idea. Yeah. She calls uh, the Call hoo ha or something. She calls it her, your Gucci, like the brand. <laughs> and I couldn't even figure out why. I'm like, oh, for Gucci. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, so her whole thing is like, don't, you know, keep the hands separated. Okay. And <laughs> I think the idea being... Because if there's soap involved, does it really matter? Oh, my God. Where were you when we recorded the group show last night, Connor? Because that, I just, I, that was my point. I feel point. like in theory, yeah, if there's soap, why would it, why would it matter? <laughs> well, so that was my point. So it, we, we all went on a long journey of shower discovery, starting with, okay. like, who uses washcloths, who doesn't. Some people are very passionate about washcloth usage. I don't. So I was saying I get in there... I lather up my hands nice. and then I, I wash the front and I, okay. then I wash the back and I same hand involved. And then, and I think here's the part where my husband was like, too much. Must, this is too much was when I said, and then I turn towards the water and then I spread the area and get, you know, rinse out. Yeah. And then I <laughs> turn around, bend over, spread it. <laughs> Not bend, not entirely bend over, but just <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm even going further than hu- last night. Human origami. I'm picturing me walking in. <laughs> you're just like you're in like a hexagon shape. Somehow. That's right. That's <laughs> you're right. Hedron. You don't even know where my head is at this point. It's just a. It's <laughs> oh just my a, god! <laughs> is it up your ass? Um, my head is in my ass. Aww. I go full Ouroboros. No, That's I sweet. just, I just. Incline, no, I turn away from the water a little bit to, you know, get the water all in there and then I'm done. But I, the question is, am I doing it wrong? Because I just feel like well, exactly what you said, because I'm lathering up, it's all good. Yeah, I just don't see any problem with it. I feel like this just is the, this shows how bored, this shows exactly what you were both talking about of like, are we two years into the pandemic or not? <laughs> it doesn't matter. The fact that we're having these conversations right. with such intensity means we're two years into yes. isolation. <laughs> so I think what you're doing is perfectly fine. Thank and you. And you are just wonderful. So thank you. That. Well, now we have to know how do you shower? <laughs> I think a very similar way. The whole time I was nodding with extreme approval because it feels very similar. I know that there was this whole debate online for a while of like, do you wash your legs? Right, or do you just let the, the lather run down? <laughs> and I think since then I've paid far more attention to parts of my body washing that I probably was washing, but I also don't have st- a strong memory of washing, kind of mm-hmm. going out. It's like driving. I'm like, wow, did I stop at that stop sign? I think I did. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I did, but I didn't like actively say, I will now stop at this stop sign. Right. I will now wash my legs. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, it's rote. But there is a spread eagle moment involved in mine as well. So it's it's a lot of cre- every, get it get the crevices, yeah. get all the important bits. Everyone says it's like armpits, armpits, butts, anywhere along that. You just that's the more important part. Your legs are not as important as people think. Now, are you washing your face in the shower? Yes, but it's there's a lot more facial care that goes into like when I wake up and before I go to bed. So mm-hmm. it is getting washed, but there's not a that's not like where my skincare routine comes into play there. But when you're washing your face, is it at the beginning or at the end? Because I do it. That's the last thing I do to get if because because if like some conditioner is dripped onto my face, I don't want to break mm. out from that or whatever. But then given the whole conversation, I'm like, oh, I'm using my butt hands for all my face. <laughs> but it had soap on it. It's fine. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah, you. you could be you could be a butt face. I don't really know at this point. Um, <laughs> that is that is definitely what like ten year old me would have clung on to in this conversation. You're a yes. butt face. No, I, I think I actually I've started washing my face at the beginning and doing I do conditioner at the beginning. Um, I don't use shampoo like most days. Apparently, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to wash your hair that often. Apparently, mm-hmm. um, and then wash my face, and then my body's usually last. Okay, that seems yeah. to be that that is what emerged as the common way. Hmm. Tony, I think you're going to have to hit that gal chat drop because we're going to need to talk about shampoo and conditioner for a moment. I do want to get into your book and your life and all that stuff, but I also uh, enjoy this. It's whatever. It's (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Okay. So. 
Snapchat. Thank you. Uh, only shampoo some days, and condi- but conditioner more often. How's that working for you? Are you liking the results? Great, yeah. I think it's more, it's less of like, how do you know if you're clean? And more, I just know that I, I look better when I do that. Like my hair lays more correctly mm-hmm. when, it, when, it, it's not, when it's shampooed and it's super clean. It's just like super straight and kind of straw-like. When it's had like con- a, a little bit of conditioner in it three days in a row, it starts to get that like a little bit more of a greasy look. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I feel like it looks best. So I more do it because I'm vain and less because I'm clean. Well, I feel like that's why most of us do most things. Yeah, I'm with you. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then lastly, what kind of shampoo and conditioner are we talking about? Um, oh God, I've been switching them a lot lately. I feel like my conditioner at the moment is like native brand. So it's an, an eco one mm-hmm. with probably like no sulfate or something. And then my, I think my body wash is like Trader Joe's peppermint or something. Again, like another eco-friendly classic. one. Yeah. It's usually a peppermint something, but most of it I've, I've switched off all the sulfates, everything I use. There's like no aluminum in my deodorant, all that kind of stuff. Do I know if it does anything? No, it's like organic produce. I don't know if it's worth the extra dollar or not. I have no right, idea. Right. <laughs> a, a recent guest of ours, theme park journalist Carly Wiesel, we were talking about skincare, and she was saying that she uh, doesn't like to use sunscreen because of all the chemicals in sunscreen, and like, which is worse for you, the sun or sunscreen? And I was like, definitely the sun is worse for you. I, I would think. assume. I think so too. Um, sunscreen is what everyone says is the most important part of a skincare routine. So exactly, but her skin is is pretty perfect. It seems to be working for her, unless it was that Zoom filter going doing overtime. Yeah, yeah. We'll ask her in like thirty years. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see who's wrong here. Who dies first? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now on that uplifting note, Connor, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, so we should explain your book. This is it's it's the last book in a trilogy. Yes. Essentially, yeah. Um, if I, if I want to do capture my, my 20s. Um, so the beginning of my 20s, I'm now at the end of my 20s. And this is, I guess, in theory, the end of the trilogy of your 20s. But mm-hmm. who knows? If there's a fourth, is there a word for a four-part series? A quadrilogy? Uh, a quad, quad, quadrigy? Yes. That it rolls off the tongue. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I won't challenge you on that one. I don't think that's a real word. Uh, so this book is, it's, um, it's photographs, it's poems, it's essays. And are, are the other two like that as well, the same format? Uh, the, the second one is, the first one is not. The first one is, or, I mean, there's no poetry and no like short wordplay in the first one. Mm-hmm. The second one is very similar format to this one. I find it's just it's easier for like the modern brain to consume content in that way. It's very difficult, I found, to to read text-heavy books, mm-hmm. no matter what the topic is. So I like to alleviate some of that pain and that stress with pretty, pretty photos yeah. and beautiful colors. Right. It's like if TikTok were a book. It's actually really know, not like that, that. Though. It's not like that at all. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. No, it's not like that at all. But I was just thinking when you're saying that for the modern, you're like breaking it up for the modern brain. Exactly. There's an overlap there with the idea that we don't have the attention span for something dense. Oh, we don't. Mine's gone. It's it's yeah. It's probably because of TikTok, but it's it's melted. I can't pay attention to anything. But was your decision to change format between the first and second book strictly for the reader or was there something about that format that spoke to you too? Kind of both. I knew that it would be, uh, it was it was almost like a way to tell a story with multiple different point of views. So you could tell the story in the obvious way with an essay and really kind of get into the nitty gritty of it, which doesn't tend to happen in a YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I wanted to approach it from a more artistic standpoint with the with the poetry. So it's a little bit more abstract, but it can add a little bit more depth in such a short way that uh, captures the same feeling or emotion I was trying to invoke. And then the photo, um, I just happen to take lots of photos. I carry a film camera with me everywhere. So the photo coincides with it, whether it's an abstract way or a direct photo from the experience. Mm-hmm. Did you study photography? You're so good. Oh, thank you. Um, I only took like a couple classes, but I, I'm self-taught. <laughs> Very impressive. Thank so you. you describe, and I love, I love this image 
Um, you describe yourself as like a bowling ball that has been thrown and like went into an alternate lane. I I very much feel that way for from a multitude of reasons. I mean, I I grew up in the Midwest. Uh, I was in the closet until I was twenty years old. I was studying business. Was probably going to work at Target Corp and have a wife and kids and and just live that life. And then somewhere along the way, I found myself in California with a YouTube channel with 5 million subscribers. Uh, I have a house in California. I have a life in California. I'm out of the closet. I, for a while, was like one of the bigger faces of the queer community, which was weird. Like all of this stuff that wasn't supposed to happen somehow magically happened at the same time. And I really did just feel like it was a total happy accident. Mm -hmm. Was not according to my plan. I don't even think I had a plan. (laughs) And what was the thing that made the ball skip lanes? Um, I think it was following following sort of like a, an instinct or a gut feeling because when I, I was I, I, I was pretty um, I was pretty you know unknowingly or slightly knowingly at the time depressed in college, but I was doing well. I had a lot of friends. Uh, I had a pretty pretty decent GPA. I was very involved in everything. So it wasn't that I left because I felt like I had to. It was more because, during that time period, my YouTube channel like hit a growth spurt and I had a friend that was coming out to California to do an internship. And I thought, well, maybe I could just go like live in California for the summer. Um, YouTube could be quote unquote my summer job. It's like it at the very least made me enough money that I could pay for rent for the entire summer. Mm -hmm. So we'll just see what happens. It was very much just like a, there's really nothing to lose here. It seems like it'll be at the very least a fun time. And I just I never left. I everything continued to grow from there, and uh, I think the decision to to go there first of all was huge. I had never lived anywhere other than Minnesota. Never had lived on my own before. Um, and then the decision to stay and drop out of college and take that type of a risk, like mm. you know, no one can advise you to do that. That's not a part of anybody's plan. It's just following what you feel is right for you and hope it works out. Where were you going to college? I was going to college at St. John's University in Minnesota. Uh, it is an all boys private school. So for as someone who was in the closet, was very weird, <laughs> <laughs> spooky. Ah, uh, what made you choose it? Uh, my my family members had gone there, so it was actually really fun because my my brother was a fifth year senior at the time, <clears throat> and my sister is two years older than me. So we all got to go to college. She was on a, a campus that was like ten miles away. Mm-hmm. We all got to go to school kind of together, and I feel like if we didn't have that experience, we may not have been as close as we are now. But because we had that experience, I was like automatically involved in in friend circles. Um, I automatically had my siblings to rely on there. It was all like perfectly set up Mm -hmm. and and i'm so thankful for it now in hindsight and you were on three sports teams as well right yeah i was um cross country swim team and track um i was in high school i was a national competitive uh athlete in swimming and a state competitor in cross country as well did you feel like you were playing a role um not uh, yes and no not in the not in the term not in terms of athletics but in terms of like I just don't even think I, I had the role. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even, I think I was just someone on the sidelines. It, I never felt like I had any individuality to myself. I never felt like there was even a part to play in a way and not in like a sad way. It wasn't like, woe is me. I don't have an identity. I just now looking back, I think like, who, who was I? I was just, I felt like just like a guy participating in high school. Mm-hmm. That's it. I, I guess the reason I ask is because this image of you studying business with your siblings, part of the community playing all these sports is very like all American. That's what that's what it conjures Incredi- to me. Incredibly so. My I feel like when people think of like the traditional American family, you know, for better or for worse, it kind of is what my family is. Mm-hmm. You know, we're like we're we're uh it's my two parents that are still married. Um, they've only ever married and loved each other. <laughs> they, there's four children and we were all went to Catholic church every Sunday. We all like loved each other and did well in school and sports. And like, I don't know. It's like, it's the, the, again, like the archetype of the American family. It's not actually the American family, but it's what people 
wrote about like 30 years ago, right. 40 years ago. I was watching a video where you um, solicited questions from your mom. And one of the questions was, what drives you nuts about dad and me? It was five <laughs> questions. Uh, the title was five things my parents don't know about me. Um, oh, God. Uh, what drives you nuts about dad and me? And I was so impressed with that question because my mom would never submit. She would be like, I don't want to (laughs) know. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm trying to think like, I don't know that I would necessarily, I would want, I would and I wouldn't want to know. Like, I feel like that's pretty brave of your mom. Oh, without a doubt. My, um, my parents are incredibly brave and both of them are incredibly curious. Uh, My dad is probably the most curious person I know. He just is so interested in the world and how it works and i think it's where i get my general curiosity and my mom is is no different they um they actually both met in the peace corps so they were both um volunteering their time in uh togo on an island in togo and i think that just defines what who they are as people and has since that moment yeah but yeah so my parents asked me that question there it's yeah i don't know if it was it's like that they knew that there was nothing bad was going to come out but um, I could tell that she genuinely would want to know the real answer. Do I know what she, what I said? No, I have no idea what I said. You said that your dad has some bad habits and develops oh. new bad habits. Yeah, he's a little bit unaware sometimes of like mouth noises <laughs> and, and like oh, yeah, breathing. You, you said he's a, he, 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 and you pick up his bad habits, like loud eating. I, it's why I, th- I feel like, not to self-diagnose, but I feel like I have that, what's that, um, mis- misophonia or something yes. where you're, you're sensitive to sounds. And I'm like, is it my dad or is it my brain? Right. I Who don't knows? know. But what Could kind of that? loud eating? Is there like smacking happening? It's that just like uh, that there's like a lack of awareness of when you're just, I feel like I'm so conscious of when I would be annoying to someone that I'm like, I, he, he doesn't even know. He's just <laughs> eating with his mouth open and just like, or like <laughs> just breathing. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? Are you okay? Should I call 911? Christ. Just has no idea, which you can't be mad at him because he has no idea. It's not on purpose. Have you always been close with your parents? Um, yes, I feel like I've gotten even closer the older I get though, which is, um, I feel, I feel really lucky to, to have that feeling. Like we, we all have a family group chat. I call one of them every other day just for a quick little check-in and, um, yeah, they're, they're, uh, I guess like friendship and opinion and involvement in my life is deeply important to me. How did they feel about you leaving college? They were so uh, they since they're Midwestern parents, they were so passive aggr- passive aggressive about mm-hmm. it. Where it was like, no, 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 you can't do this, or like, no, 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 you should definitely keep thinking about this. This isn't going to happen. You can't do that. But like, still involving me in the conversation, even though they internally had already made up the decision. Right. And I'm like, I don't know how to tell you this any other way. I just know this is right. Like, we can't deny the fact that I've gone from. Like, I think it was at the time, it was like 100,000 YouTube subscribers to a million in just like a summer. I was like, something is happening. Mm. Like, something is happening. And, and if I deny it, it could be like a fire that I, I put a blanket over and it's it's been put out. And I feel like I need to give at least a semester um, to let to see what happens if I let the fire blaze. And after I had, I, I swear to God, I made like a PowerPoint presentation or something <laughs> about why I should do this. But after I had said it, I think it was just the ease of just give me one semester and we'll see what happens. That they said fine, but they weren't fine with it, mm-hmm. but they said fine. So how did it happen? How did you what what made you start on YouTube? I I was just always looking for a creative outlet. I think it was a case of right place, right time, because not many people honestly like even knew about YouTube in in high school days. They knew about viral videos. Like everyone knew about a viral video they had watched. Um, But no one was like an avid YouTube watcher. So to not even have that level of awareness, let alone that people were making individual content daily, weekly, and also making a career out of it, no one was aware of it. So I, I stumbled upon it and became deeply infatuated and interested in the process. And I was like, I need a creative outlet. I've always wanted to edit videos or take photos or do something. And I've never been able to. So I would do my homework at night. I would get done. I would eat dinner, do that whole thing. I would shut my bedroom door. And then I would turn on my laptop camera and just like film something Mm -hmm. and then edit something. 
and then put it on my YouTube channel and then just go to bed. And was and that like, like I would, editing an iMovie or did you have? It was, yeah, whatever. I, I think at the time I had an HP laptop and then I eventually went to an, an Apple MacBook and that's when it everything changed because it comes with such great mm -hmm. movie software that it made everything much more fun. But I was so interested in the process of of. I could just film like for 60 seconds and it's like, what can I make that clip? Mm -hmm. Like what sound effects, what text, what transitions, what anything can I do to elevate that clip? And it could be anything. And like no one else can make this exactly as I would make it right now. It's like a fingerprint. It was so interesting to me and I was so in love with the process. I was uploading like five videos a week to nobody, to an <laughs> audience of nobody, just for fun. Mm -hmm. And so then how did it start start catching on? I think I just became quite savvy to um, trends before they were trends or clicky clicky titles before mm -hmm. they were clicky titles. Like, I don't even know if the word clickbait was invented. When was the cl word clickbait invented? Probably within the last, like, 15 years. Yeah, so that sounds about right. I don't think I had a level of awareness to that I was even doing anything like that or that, like, trending internet videos was a thing mm -hmm. again. So I think it was just me noticing that without having the – the actual information on what I was doing and just being aware of it and seeing what was working for other creators and then just kind of like copying but adding my own little twist to it and evolving evolving as I went. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first video that, that got a lot of views? I never had one particular video that did well, but I, um, I, I started making friends on Twitter and I started meeting other people that were my age that were doing a similar thing. There weren't many of us. It was a tiny community and being like, Oh my God, that kid in Texas is, you know, also in college and he's also doing videos. And he, it seems like no one is, his family also knows about it. It's like weird how there were copies of me around the United States or the world doing a similar thing. And we would just tweet each other and then follow each other. And then sometimes like FaceTime each other. And it was just so weird how, we, we were so similar mm -hmm. in, in, in so many ways without knowing anything about each other. And because of that, then we would do like collabs with each other. Um, if we were ever in the same state, we would try to meet up and do an in-person in collab with each other. And then the, it became this whole thing of like growing each other from each other's fan bases. Would I know or would listeners know who any of these other people are that you're talking about? I'm trying to think if your listeners would. I mean, like, so I had a, I eventually had a big collab channel called Our Second Life, which was one of the first collab channels of its kind. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it did incredibly well. We would upload every single day of the week and each video would get over a million views. Uh, and so those people were like JC Kalen, Ricky Dillon, um, Kian Lolly, Trevi Moran, Sam Potterorf. But um, other people in my group were like Grace Helbig, okay. Mabry Hart, Tyler Oakley. Um, so like a lot of, a lot of OG YouTubers mm -hmm. at the time, but pretty much anyone that's like an OG YouTuber, I know them or I've met them. <laughs> yeah. I've had, I've had a handful on the show. We had Michael Buckley, Grace Helbig. Oh, Michael Buckley. I love Michael He, Buckley. uh, talked Amazing. about, yeah, he talked about writing a mission statement for his life that he, really? yeah. And it was like. It inc I remember it included the line, like, I love myself so much that I don't need you to love me. He shared it with us on the show. Wow. And after that, this is, <clears throat> I feel cheesy admitting this, but I think I've admitted it on a different episode. I like wrote up my own little mission statement. And <sighs> when I'm feeling a little bit lost, I go back and I look at it and it has totally helped me make decisions and things like that. Cause it just kind of like makes me remember this is what my priorities are when I'm not under stress or being pushed in different directions this is who i am and what i want to stand for it really helped that, me that's lovely he's had an amazing um not even like evolution but just transformation as a person where he's he's very into life life coaching and, yeah. and very inspirational topics just like that it's yeah. so cool to see everyone that i've known for over a decade now evolve and change right like yeah so i've had michael buckley grace helbig mamry hannah hart Shane Dawson yeah. many times. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, everyone's such a community. It was it was such a community at the time, a small community. And now that it's, you know, mainstream successful and people are, you know, coming out of it and being like mainstream celebrities, it's it's totally different. But I'm just I'm happy I was a part of the entire process. I know 
like Michael Buckley for sure, his feelings about YouTube changed. How do you feel about YouTube currently? It only, I mean, it only makes sense. Like everything, this it's what happens to anything that gets that becomes popular. Is people it becomes popular and it attracts all the right and wrong kinds of people. Uh, it it becomes a little bit more of a a game, or I guess it becomes more of like a, a job at that mm-hmm. point. At the time, it felt like our own little secret that everyone was do everyone was doing for genuine fun, and now it's you know when I meet people that that want to get involved in YouTube that aren't already, it's always because it's a career. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a, I want to get involved because it looks so much fun. It's because, oh, I want to get involved because I've seen X, Y, and Z make millions of dollars and become a mainstream celebrity. Versus at the time, that literally wasn't a thing. That was not a thought in my mind for the first like three years of making videos because it had never been done. Mm-hmm. So there is a sense of like innocence involved in that time that I again just like appreciate that I was a part of but at the same time you know like things change and I can't I can't knock people for getting involved now because it really has there have been some amazing content creators Mm -hmm. that have come out of just the last few like years so there's always a few bad apples (laughs) there's kind of a similar thing that's happened with podcasting as well I would say oh I bet Mm -hmm. and you know the OG podcasters are like it is so di- it's so different. You know, every time a humongous celebrity starts their podcast, it's like, okay, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing with YouTube channels. When when celebrities started coming over, we're like, wait a minute. Yeah. We everyone said this wasn't cool and now <laughs> it's cool. What the fuck? Right. Like, this isn't fair. <laughs> yeah. Now everyone has a YouTube channel and everyone has a podcast. Um, I know. It's funny to see, um, I laugh when I see celebrities on TikTok now too, because it's the same thing where I'm like, this is so disingenuous. I could tell your like management right. or your label or your team is like, make like a gun to their head. <laughs> make fucking TikTok, yeah. Cindy. Make them. <laughs> we want you to be successful, Cindy. <laughs> and like, you can just tell that it's just... It's it's like a team creating little five second videos, and it's 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 kind of sad. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, so OTL, our second life, your collab group. What was the word you used for to describe that? What's the term? Boy band without the music. Yes, your boy band without <laughs> the music. Were you guys all spread? In my mind, you're all living in a house together, but you weren't, right? Well, so we did eventually. We were like, when you think of like disturbing youtube content houses now or like tiktok houses and stuff we were the first one that did that okay. unknowingly again it with total innocence we all moved to california moved into a house together and created videos it from that house together but, and we had no idea what we were doing. and what was the timeline from when you left college moved to california and when all that was happening um very quick okay so, I, so I you kind of came to california to do that with them Sort of. Uh, kind of. So like I came for the summer. So I, I, I moved in with one kind of two people for the summer in a, a small apartment. And then after we all decided to stay after the month of July, then it was like, OK, we should get a house. And then the rest of the people should come out Got and it. live in the house, too. Um, and Logan again, Paul was like, not there. No, <laughs> Logan Paul was not there. Jake Paul was not present. OK, there was no boxing. Floyd mayweather never there was probably boxing at one point you know like there were a few parties where i would like come out of my bedroom and be like who the fuck is here who what the fuck is happening Mm -hmm. (laughs) there were some crazy times yeah the police were called and did show up (laughs) so before you were saying before uh disturbing youtube houses were a trend you guys had one and so if the police police were coming out it it was a little disturbing at times yeah i think it's just natural when like 20 to 23 year old boys are involved in a a house that just like something bad is gonna happen by no means were we doing anything like truly heinous but you know just like people are loud and you get a noise complaint and the police come and knock and and stuff like that so we weren't we weren't doing anything too bad but all of this sounds like the kind of story you would want to save in a hardbound book for your children. Uh, and I can tell you exactly how you could do that. You could do that with StoryWorth. I don't know if you're familiar with StoryWorth. StoryWorth is the best. I gave this to my dad a couple years ago. And okay, so I have the kind of dad where I thought I'd heard every single one of his stories. Uh, but StoryWorth, you sign up for it. 
It's a subscription. So each week, the person who you give it to receives a story prompt, a question, and you can customize it. You can go with the ones they suggest. You can write your own questions. Uh, and, and, and they respond to the prompts. And then at the end of the year, they take all the stories, put them into a beautiful hardbound book, and you have a book of memories. And like I was saying with my dad, I thought that I'd heard every single one of his stories. And through this, I learned so much about him. It's amazing. And I I love having the book. I can't wait till my kids are old enough to read it. It just makes a wonderful holiday gift. This holiday season, uh, I want you to give a gift to your loved ones that'll make them feel special and unique. Uh, and that is why you should be giving them story worth with story worth. I'm giving those I love the most a thoughtful personal gift from the heart and preserving their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash best friend and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash best friend. Save $10 on your first purchase. Also, speaking of memories uh, and gifts, I want to tell you guys about Skylight Frame. Skylight Frame is this beautiful digital photo frame. You can email photos to it. Uh, it's very easy to set up. Before they were even a sponsor, Daniel said to me, hey, I know what we should give the grandmas for Mother's. It was either Mother's Day or Christmas. It was one of the big, big gifting holidays this year. And he showed me this frame. And I said, that's great. We sent it to them. Uh, neither of them are super duper tech savvy or tech they they aren't tech savvy. I'm sorry if you're listening. I'm just I just got to speak my truth. You're not tech savvy, okay? Mom, you text me about Apple stuff all the time and I don't know either. But there were zero texts asking me how to get this frame up and running. She had that thing up and running. Basically just get it out of the box, plug it in. Whenever we go visit them, and also I have one now. Uh my 4-year-old and my 2-year-old are able to swipe through. So it's it's very user friendly and it's beautiful and I love it so much. I love just looking at these. Mostly, it's photos of my kids. If you get it, you could also put photos of my kids on it, but you don't have to. As a special offer, you can get ten dollars off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe dot com and enter code Allison. That's right, to get ten dollars off your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe dot com and enter code Allison. That's Skylight Frame S K Y L I G H T F R A M E dot com promo code Allison. Okay, we're back. So you're living in a house with all these dudes. You are just me and a few bros, you know. Just you and the just a few bros. bros chilling in a hot tub because. Actually, half of us were gay. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize half of you were. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say half of us were. Uh, another one of us is gay, and then another one of us unknowingly uh, is uh, trans female. Um, and the other three are just just cool guys. You know? <laughs> they're just, just they're cool the guys. bros. Yeah, and you're bros. you're making videos like how to know if a guy if a girl or like how to let a girl know <laughs> what was the one? No, it was it was for ladies for girls and it was like here are some ways you can know if a guy likes you and you said that you had googled it ahead of time and then you were just right so you are being painful you're you're pretending to be straight or you weren't did you you did know right it's just it's like a complicated thing first of all how dare you um <laughs> second of all i'm hanging up Sorry. third of all my therapist is calling very quickly uh no it's a very strange thing uh because it's like i knew that something was different about me and I was very aware of it, but I had repressed it mm -hmm. so deeply that I think I thought either one, that it, it, it could be a phase or two, that it, I, it, like, it just wouldn't ever happen or exist if I never acted on it. So for me, it was like, I knew that there was a subtle fakeness to it all, but I also didn't know if in 10 years I there wouldn't that it, I would be different. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's a very complex thing. Yeah. I, feel like. I guess what I'm wondering is with the other guys. That's not the correct language, actually, with the other people in the house. I know. I had to think about that recently because um, one of our members coming out as trans, it's a very recent thing. So even when I say like boy band, right. I'm like, that's not fucking yeah. correct. Right. Yeah. So with Shit. with the other people in the house, was yes. there any I kind of uh, uh I feel like I know the answer. <laughs> so but I'm asking it anyway. <laughs> was there any sort of acknowledgement between you of Did we kiss? No, Are that's you asking <laughs> if we kiss? I'm not asking about making out. <laughs> Did we kiss? I'm asking 
Was there any recognition that there was some trying to fit into a box that didn't fit? I do. What's funny is that there was more of a recognition of the other two than me. I think I was the surprise. Okay. Uh, And there was, you know, like very like a few whispers here and there, but we were all very respectful of each other. And, you know, it wasn't ever like an outright conversation. There was no like bullying or Mm -hmm. anything involved. It wasn't like typical kind of like high school shenanigans, but it was much more of a conversation about the other two than myself. So when I came out, I think technically before the other two, it was, it was like a shock. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had any clue. Right. And were you still in the group? Say again? Were you still in the, the, um, in the person band? (laughs) <laughs> Were you still in the collaboration house when you came out? Yes. Um, it was a, I just, I let it all boil up as a Virgo does. <laughs> and I decided to let it all out in the same day, which was right before our sold out US tour. I told them, hi, so I'm moving out after this tour. I'm leaving the channel. And also, I'm gay. <laughs> And I told them all at the same time, all of them in front of me mm-hmm. in a dark room. And I told them all of that at the same time. I was like, I'm just going to get it all off my yeah. chest. Let's go. And and how was that? It was really sweet. Uh, it was. It couldn't have gone better. They were all very compassionate and uh, responsive to it and, and didn't act on any sort of initial uh, – I guess they they didn't act on the fact that like – their lives were also potentially changed because, you know, I was moving out and leaving. Yeah. They more fell into the 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 role of, like, concerned friend because they could tell that it was hard for me to do that, mm-hmm. which was it, – it becomes more heartwarming the older I get, yeah. those moments when you think about it. It's so about sweet. How, yeah, and, like, how, how it could have gone so many other ways, you know? And I just I, – I continue to feel lucky that – it's, it went the right way, or the way it should have gone, I guess. What made you want to move out and leave the group? I I still don't even really know if that was, like, the right decision, but I think it's one of those moments where you just realize everything is not right, and you kind of decide, let's just spill the bucket and start over. Mm. <laughs> so I think mine was, like, I need to, I need to change, and I need to change something quickly, and... I already had my own channel and my own career as well. So I'm like, well, maybe if I just kind of like cut this sandbag off my boat, I'll be able to continue floating forward and things will be easier for me. Again, not much strategy involved. Just truly it was like an idea I had and I thought, sure, this has got to be it. So let's do it. Um, And uh, I I mean, I guess it it worked. It's not like I I tanked (laughs) after that or something. (laughs) I didn't sink. (laughs) How long had you been thinking you wanted to leave the group? Uh, there was a decent amount of time prior. Um, it was one of those things where, to I I was putting in a lot of effort, and it wasn't being reciprocated. And like no shade, I think again, like there's a lot of people that, or a lot of them that were just like having a good time and just being young, and not caring so much about like the 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 potential opportunity that we had at hand. So I was having to do the role of accountant mm. manager content scheduler, content uh, organizer and create. I had to do it all because if I didn't do it, no one else was. Uh, And I think that weighed on me and they were very unaware of like how much time and effort I was putting into making sure that was going, that was going smoothly. And it just ate me alive after a while. Were you older than them? Um, two of them are the same age as me, and then two of them are a few years younger, and then one of them is a lot younger than us. Mm-hmm. It's so it's yeah. It's sounding so much. I I played in a band years ago. Uh, Tony is is the drummer in a popular rock band currently, Motion City Soundtrack. Tony, this is sounding very much like band stuff. Are you relating to this? Yeah, I can I can I can see that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's there's just a lot of cooks in the kitchen, a lot of opinions, a lot of um, yeah, it's just a, a lot of emotions get involved because, again, at the end of the day, we all care about it. So it's hard to knock anyone for it. Were there. um, I think of you uh, of you all in this house as like very young, although you were adults. But I was going to say, like, were there 
like stage parents, but not stage parents. Were there was a representation? Were there managers and just other adults involved? So we got involved in uh, the internet at a time where it was the beginning of that. So like YouTube networks were a thing. Managers had just become a thing. Agents weren't quite yet a thing. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, very late on had got um, a YouTube network and a manager for us, but by no means was it is was it that helpful frankly like ads and and opportunities weren't much of a thing at the time so we got them but it it was a totally different ball game to what it is now right okay so you leave you come out um and at some point you began writing your first book so can you just like talk a, a little bit about that and i know at some point you were pretty depressed can you sort of fill me in on the timeline of that Oh, the whole time. This just the whole depression time. has been has been my best buddy the whole time. And again, like unknowingly, mm-hmm. it's one of those things where you, when you when you become aware of it, you're like, oh, it's always been there. Yeah. I just didn't have the vocabulary or the wherewithal to to acknowledge it. But yeah, at that same right at that same moment, I was also almost. I can't remember if it happened before that tour or right after. I think it might have been right after. That's when I started writing the first book. So it was, it's always, I always write when I'm in like a heightened state mm-hmm. of emotion. So everything feels, it, everything's so visceral that it's easy to put pen to paper. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was, a, that was a very easy time to write about. I was like, I could write two books right now. <laughs> I have a lot going on in my mind. So I'll just put it, I'll put it down. <laughs> that's really good. I mean, that's really good that that's your impulse to get it to, yeah. to get it out. My no- my notes uh, my notes app is just full of all my ideas thoughts everything um, I write down little poems every day mm-hmm. in there and it's almost about going back and and collecting them and then working them out into something that's presentable. So can you explain what you just said about depression has always been there you just didn't have the vocabulary to describe it like what was it that you were feeling before? I it's you know you don't. It's almost like you think that everyone sees the world that you do. And then as soon as you meet enough people or experience enough of uh, experience enough of humanity, you start to realize that's obviously not true. Mm -hmm. And the more I met people, the more I started realizing like, you don't all you don't like shut your bedroom door at night and cry and feel like a, an existential dread for seemingly no reason mm. and don't tell anyone about it. That's weird. You don't also do that. I thought everyone did that. Mm-hmm. I thought everyone was anxious about everything all the time or har- harboring deep secrets about themselves all the time. I just assumed to a certain extent that that's kind of that was normal in a weird way. So as soon as I started realizing it wasn't, and then I also realized. You know, like not everyone is gay. (laughs) Not everyone is secretly gay. Uh, It just it became more apparent that you know I guess I was a little unique in that in that stance. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like you've described your childhood as really good and adolescence as enjoyable, which I was like, wow! Imagine imagine enjoying adolescence. I can't. And isn't that funny? I. I, I, again, I just, I feel fortunate because I have fond memories of growing up. I have fond memories of my childhood and everything, even though it was relatively simple. And even though, again, every time I would close my bedroom door, I was either making a YouTube video. I think that's why I started making YouTube videos too, was to avoid the depression Mm -hmm. at night or to avoid, um, the, the Sunday scaries, the late night thoughts, um, by doing something creative to distract me. Um, I almost, I've never really thought that through until this very moment. So, but I think that that was a reason why I needed an outlet Mm -hmm. so badly. Uh, and, but I do, I look back on my childhood and my upbringing as, as relatively, you know, glossy and sparkly. It's just very unique. It's not, not a lot of people feel that way. So then was there a period of time where the depression hit harder? Oh yeah, there were. Yeah, there were, I think as soon as I moved out and went went to college, it was the perfect storm of like it popping my bubble in a way where I'm like, oh, school is suddenly very hard because it's now Mm -hmm. hyper-focused. Oh, you know, athletics, I'm not, I'm suddenly not like the best in my school. I'm, I'm, you know, mid-tier and then it's like, oh, I also have no idea what I want to do after this. 
And then also you have the crippling depression from like not wanting to tell anyone you're gay. But like all of that was the perfect storm of of putting me in some like really dark spaces in in college because I was just so isolated. Mm -hmm. At what point did you start going to therapy? Not till way later in my life. Um, I'm really... I, I'm really glad that the conversation of of therapy has become much more normalized uh, in the last five years or so or decade or so because I had, didn't even think that was an option. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even know where to begin as a, a child, a teenager, a young adult, anything. Uh, it wasn't until I moved to L.A. where it's practically like Required. it's practically a part of your personality <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to go to therapy. But as soon as I had a few friends that had therapists and – one of them really kindly recommended me his, and I uh, set up a session probably when I was um, maybe like 22, 20, meh, maybe like 23, a little bit later than I should have. And I, I went to her, and I'm still with her to this day. Uh, I don't go as frequently, but I went very frequently during the like the heat of mm-hmm. it all. I don't know that it can be parsed out this way, but what I'm wondering is – how much do you think the depression was trying to suppress this part of your identity and then also working through like who who are you and how much yeah like without that would you have had the depression do you think I blame it all on being gay. <laughs> I knew it. That I blame it all on the gays. <laughs> they caused the depression. Genuinely though, I wonder if I I wonder if it would be a part of me if I didn't have struggles with identity and orientation. I, I I do deeply wonder that. I assume to a certain extent it wouldn't, or at least it wouldn't have been so severe. Mm. Uh, so I, I imagined that that heightened a lot of it at the time. And then you add this whole budding element of, of fame of, you know, yeah. like my coming out video I posted got 12 million views. I went down the street to get a Starbucks the next day and the barista was congratulating me on being gay. So like it felt like everyone all of a sudden knew the thing that had caused me to like cry myself to sleep for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden everyone knew it and it was a celebration and it was deeply confusing why I was so scared of it Uh or why it had plagued me for so long. And there were like levels of regret, but also levels of excitement and enjoy. So it was just like, it's just so confusing. Like it's right. even after, even after this, no one talks about how even after the storm, it's confusing. Mm-hmm. It's always like the lead up to it. Mm-hmm. But the aftermath is so hard to pick up all the pieces. Yeah, you're right. Everyone focuses on like, and then you live happily ever after. But that's not the case. <laughs> no, no, no. It's very confusing afterwards too. Right. Well, you mentioned in House Fires, like needing to, you know, there's a whole subculture, a whole culture of, you know, queer culture. And you had to like sort of, no pun, bone up on all the terms and figure it all out. And <laughs> <I'm> bone up. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to get canceled? I feel like I'm coming. So I've been, I've been really just, I'm right on that line. No, I'm just. No, you're fine. Thank Are you, you kidding me? <laughs> Thank you. Um, can, you you mentioned that there was like a level of regret with the popularity of the video and being congratulated at Starbucks. Can you talk a little bit about what that re- what that regret was, what it felt like? I think it's just this this you know this idea of like what could have been. I think mm. I thought a lot about of like oh if I would have come out in high school, like my first relationship could have been with someone in my high school, or if I was out in college, I could have had you know, a whole different college experience. Um, I could have had different friends even. Like I could have had more friends. Who knows? Like maybe maybe the whole YouTube thing wouldn't have happened, but maybe I would have, you know, just like been a completely different person. So there's this idea of like a life not lived, mm-hmm. even though you're satisfied with the life you have lived. It's still like what what would have been? What could have been? I have I have no idea. So you can't help but more wonder wonder about it and and kind of like daydream about it even though it's not saying that i'm dissatisfied by any means with what the outcome is right no that makes total sense you know what else makes sense connor 
The, what? <laughs> the queen is in. Order. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm the queen of segways. The queen of segways has entered the chat. Uh, what makes sense is ordering your prescription skincare online without having to go to a doctor's office. I'm talking about apostrophe. Uh, look, as 2021 is coming to an end, I've started thinking about my New Year's resolutions. And uh, one of my resolutions is I'm going to continue using tret. I can never say it right. Tret- tretinoin? Tretinoin. Tretinoin. That's what it is. I'm getting, I was calling it tretinoin for many months. No one corrected me. It's tretinoin. Uh, it's generic retin A. I've been using it. I'm glowing. My skin looks better than it ever has. Uh, and then I'm also using a skin bleaching cream on some sunspots that I had, possibly age spots. I don't know, dark spots. You, I don't, I doubt you can even see them right now. Um, it's made such a difference and it's super, I've been feeling like I need to go to the, I, I've been doing this for a while now via apostrophe, but I had been feeling like I need to go to a dermatologist, but I don't have one. I don't know who to go to. And then apostrophe waltzed into my life and it is so convenient. Fill out a questionnaire, take three pictures, upload them, get an email saying that your dermatologist, mine's named, her name is Maggie, uh, has put together a plan and then you choose what you want of it. You can communicate with your dermatologist if you have specific concerns. Like I wanted to, to, you know, increase the strength a little bit if she felt like that was a good idea. Anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's so great. And they have, uh, they have oral medications, acne stuff. And then they also have like the stuff I mentioned that can address other concerns. We have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider at apostrophe.com slash best friend when you use our code best friend. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash best friend and click begin visit. Then use our code best friend at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. That's apostrophe, A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash best friend and use that code best friend to get your dermatologist crafted treatment plan for five dollars and we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast i also want to talk to you guys about better help online therapy we were just talking a moment ago about the stigma of therapy in some places i'm um spoiled here in california or southern california specifically because i talk openly about how much therapy has helped me and i've been going to therapy for a while. Um, and I forget that not everyone is so open to it. Uh, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but that isn't true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse and it can help you avoid those lows. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. And Allison Rosen listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash best friend. That's betterhelp, better H-E-L-P dot com slash best friend. I want to tell you guys about stance. Uh, I have become a stance convert. I'm a stance believer. All their apparel is so comfortable, soft. It's high quality. It's made really well. It's colorful. They have these fun collaborations with different like pop culture entities. Uh, earlier today, I was wearing their combed cotton no-show socks. So comfortable. I'm telling you. Stance will change your life. Founded in 2009, Stance Apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks, underwear, and active apparel. With a sharp focus on comfort, quality, and creativity, Stance brings an atypical aesthetic alongside some of pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression because everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. So here are just some of the collaborations uh, they have. Wu-Tang Clan, The Goonies, I feel like that is targeted directly to people my age because that is hitting on um, that's pushing my nostalgia button, pressing my nostalgia lever. Harry Potter, Bob Marley, Pixar. Uh, it's all so great. Stanth believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in. That those who feel good do good. See for yourself. Register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Use promo code Allison at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. So again, that's stance.com, promo code Allison. Stance.com, promo code Allison. Okay. We are back. So I just wanted to possibly 
make you uncomfortable by reading one of your poems to you and then asking you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. This is called I Am My Own Loneliness. I felt alone before him. I felt alone with him. I felt alone without him. Maybe it's me. Uh, I related to that intensely, like a younger version of me. This feeling of, I feel homesick even though I'm home. Like, mm-hmm. but f- can, can you talk about what that, about that feeling? And do you have that feeling presently? I, yeah, it's this, it's this kind of, I feel like the, the word or the feeling that encapsulates almost that entire book is this yearning mm-hmm. or like a longing for something that you don't even know what it is constantly. I always almost just feel like I'm missing something and no matter where I am, it's always just like there's even if it's just like the tiniest piece of me isn't quite there or is missing or somewhere else. And I never know why that is, mm-hmm. why I feel like a sense of displacement in in most moments of my life. And like that is a that's a poem essentially about that, whether it's, you know, the, the reader can have it be like a literal person or it can be a sense of self. Mm-hmm. It can be your own self like you never feel like you're with yourself even when you're without yourself or even when you're wanting to be with yourself. You just never feel quite there. Do you ever have dreams where you – so I'm making this sound so vague. I'll just – I'm going to talk about myself for a minute. Um, <laughs> I will have these dreams uh, where – and it's usually a celebrity, which I feel like means something in a dream, but like someone – that I kind of have a crush on returns my affection. And it is, it's like everything in the dream is glowing. And Mm. it's sort of what I imagine people who are super religious and like really feel like they have a connection with Jesus. Like I imagine they must walk around feeling that way. But it's like, I like someone sees me in a real way and loves me and I won't have to be alone anymore. And it's like Mm. a feeling that it's, it's not a recurring it is kind of a recurring dream even though it changes a lot um but i don't think it's about someone else loving me i think it's probably about acceptance or something but do you ever have dreams like that that's so interesting i i do i have a a similar reoccurring dream where it's like it it's never even like sometimes it's not even you know it's it's one of those where you wake up and you're like i can't even remember mm-hmm. like who that was but it felt like someone familiar or it felt like someone that i know in some way but i can't remember already but it's like it's almost like that person's like hugging yeah. me or that person's with me and you're right it's like a warming sensation or a, a glowing sensation of the dream and like nothing happens i just i just know that it's like a very normal situation with someone there and i feel peaceful and safe and i wake up feeling really great from it and i'm like what does that mean yeah. there's got to be something about that and i don't know what it is yeah either. i mean i think it's prop that person is probably you it could be yeah it's like you could you could take a lot of angles from it and i never it never leaves me in like a oh my god what is that why do i keep having this with anything i'm like grateful i mm-hmm. have it because i'm like that was such a nice dream right it feels I so have good no idea who it was yeah or what it was about but i'm like that was so pleasant wonder why that keeps happening will that go away at some point or is it just now just a pr- part of the cycle mm-hmm. right there with me forgetting my locker combo and being late to a class i can never play that to <laughs> yes tony do you have school anxiety dreams i did when i was younger i haven't had one in a long time i'm i weirdly don't have a ton of dreams that i remember and i've oh, never okay been. uncreative tony just kidding hey. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the 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 main recurring dream that I ever have though, and it still will happen every now and then, it will be that I am about to play a show, literally g- about to walk on stage, but I am I cannot get my shoes on. Oh, like they're j- I, like they just will not go on my feet, and then I'm freaking out. And then the other version is that I sometimes get out on stage. And my drums are just scattered all around the stage. Like none of them are; in, they're not together. And oh like you know, like the rest of the band has already started the song, and I'm like, "What? Well, yeah." So those are my two painful. Yeah. That's painful. <laughs> Connor, do you have um, YouTuber dreams? Is that a thing? No, I have. I have general like disorganization dreams, a similar where I, a similar um, type of dream where it's just like I haven't prepared for something or something isn't quite right and I'm trying to figure it out but of course I never do 
And like that is the entire dream. And I wake up stressed as hell from it. Yes. But it yeah. It's nothing yeah, nothing. I have a lot of great, like fantastical uh f- just fantasy dreams where like I'm in like uh a mythical type world and like everything is very Harry Potter esque or Lord of the Rings esque and like they're very vivid, but very weird. So much so that I can't even describe to you them now. It is cool, though, when you wake up from a dream and you're like, that could have been a movie. My mind, what a great plot. Um, I I jotted down a few notes here. Odd numbers freak you out? I don't like odd numbers, no. I do not at all. I like numbers. Mm -hmm. If you tell me a number, I'll remember it for years. Um, But not your locker combination. No. (laughs) Or, I mean, I I have the muscle memory of that. I bet if I went to my locker in high school, I could do it. Couldn't tell you what the numbers mm-hmm. are now, though. <laughs> so, um, but odd numbers, no, yeah. So, like, no, how does the, how does the dislike of odd numbers manifest? I don't know. I wonder if that's just me being annoying. No, no. I, I, I guess what I mean <laughs> is, like, if you're like when it's, you know, for the year that you're an odd number age, is that a bummer? Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, like in like 2021, I'm like, oh, can't wait for 2022. How how delicious does that year look like? like mm, mm, mm. Yes, when I was thinking 2020 like, was so great. <laughs> I, know. I remember feeling that way about it. Oh. But like I did that with like my book publishing date. Um, I was like, oh, what if we push it one week? Because that number looks better. I've always done things like that. I'm like, I don't know. That number just looks better. It's better for advertising. It's better to say. Are you superstitious? Give me a better feel. Not so much. I do have a few superstitious habits where, like, I'll always touch the airplane before I get on Mm -hmm. or I'll, like, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. That's the extent of it. Are you? Uh, I always say I'm not. And then it's like, but. And then it's like the fine print, you know. (laughs) Um, When people open an umbrella indoors, I'm just like, what are you doing? You're asking for bad luck. I, I told the story before but went umbrella shopping with my mom and she just non-stop opening umbrellas inside and i was like i can't with this right now this is just begging for something bad to happen so <laughs> i do have a thing about that and then also i have a rule with myself which is if i have a magic eight ball i'm not allowed to ask it life and death questions because mm, otherwise i'll just freak myself out I can only ask it little questions. Um, but other than that, no, I'm a very logical person. No superstitions. It, interesting. Um, I think we should do Just Me or Everyone. Is it just me or everyone? Okay, this is a segment where people write in with things they think or do, and they wonder, is it just me or is it everyone? And if you would like to send one of your own, tweet it to at A-R-I-Y-N-B-F. Um, use the hashtag J-M-O-E, just me or everyone. Uh, and uh, and that's how you do that. Okay, Connor, do you have one of your own? Okay, um, is it just me or does everyone, before they go out to eat or go to a restaurant, do you look at the menu ahead of time and completely like practice and rehearse your order? Oh. Like I know exactly what I'm going to get ahead of time and it, it won't change just so that I can like have, I can de-stress and sit down and already know what I'm going to get and I don't have to think about it. I feel like th- that's more of a like life hack than a just me or everyone because as you were telling, as you are expl- because yes, I look at the menu ahead of time often, but I don't practice it and like get it down to a, you know, airtight situation. However, I do hate the feeling of being in a restaurant wanting to talk to the person, especially if it's like someone I want to catch up with or if it's like a businessy thing where I feel self-conscious, but being like, okay, I got to block out all that and focus on the menu. You're right. If you get it done ahead of time, then you're t- you can be present for the awkwardness of it- the encounter. It's the worst. I hate the 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 push of like the the restaurant server that's like, do you know what you yeah. want? Do you know what you want? Do you know? And you have to keep pausing your conversation th- to then look, but not fully look, and then forget that you need to look. And it's this like whole awkward dance right. of trying to figure out what you want to eat. It's so frustrating. It feels like people are getting more and more. Maybe this is just L.A. People are getting more and more pushy to get you out of the restaurant as quick as possible. I think so. I'm I'm there to chill. Yeah. I'm there to have a good time. I think especially in the pandemic where there's everyone's trying to sit outside. 
Although I don't think it's like that as much now, but I do think there's a like, you can have the table for X amount of time and then mm-hmm. we're kicking you out. Um, Tony, wh- where are you with ordering and looking ahead of time? Uh, I'm like somewhere in the middle. I actually, I don't usually look ahead of time and I, I it's almost weirdly a sort of uh, social anxiety crutch sometimes for me to still have that menu to look at maybe like it's, yes. like, a, it's like an out sometimes not an out, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I won't look ahead of time. And then I'll, I, as far as like the rehearsing thing, I'll definitely, you know, then when I decide I'll, uh, there, there have t- been times that I didn't order something at a restaurant because I maybe didn't know how to pronounce it and I didn't want to sound stupid. <laughs> Isn't there nothing worse than like having to point yes. at it and being like, I'll have this one at the Italian restaurant? Yep. It's so deeply embarrassing. Yeah. I don't, this is going to make me sound really provincial. I don't love when at an Italian restaurant, the whole everything is in Italian. Who was that for? I almost have to agree. Also, I don't like that Italian restaurants don't specify what's vegetarian and what's vegan. Because yeah. as a vegetarian, I randomly order some cured meat that I had no idea was a cured meat. Oh, is that a thing like across the board they don't indicate? They, I, most ones that I've been to recently, there's not a V in sight. Mm. Italian restaurants. <laughs> and most places I've been to, there ain't a V in sight. Italian restaurants, get, a, get on it. Was yeah. that a joke that Come I dismissed? On. It was a, it was a vagina. Oh, Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to me I don't know to me V I was thinking virgin and I and I I don't know why though um when was the last time I did see a virgin <laughs> that's an interesting yeah. question yeah <laughs> who was the last virgin you saw <laughs> I mean my kids <laughs> yeah that's why I thought I was like when was the last time I was around a child right <laughs> right um okay okay here's one but uh, we, I'll read it, but we might not know who. Okay. Stunt Panda says, even if I were Matt Jones' mother, I would still think a phone call from Greg Heller was my son, and I'm a dude. Uh, does anyone know who Matt Jones is? Is this a sports person? I have no idea. I, it's, it's almost like you just spoke a different language. There. I know the language of, of people who listen to this show. This well, is, a, my, this is Matt brain... Jones. Oh, sorry. I've started to Google. Who is it? Uh, it's, I'm showing, holding a picture. Oh, of yeah, him. he was Badger on Breaking oh. Bad. That's who I thought. It was. Oh. oh, okay, okay. Yes, okay. So Absolutely. Greg Heller is a former regular on my show. Comes out twice a week. Monday is a one-on-one like this one. Thursday is a group show. Greg Heller is a former regular, and he has a very specific voice. Tony, can you play a drop of his so we can hear what his voice sounds like? Most people think I'm a fat old guy from New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute oh my god he sounds that's not exactly like that's Badger. not the character for, oh no my god. wait tony play more of his drops boner sandwich <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's, i love a soundboard sounds so much like him um that's fairly bananas i would say i never really it's, put that I, in my head they sounded different but then now that i'm playing them yeah i can i can kind of see it they yeah. sound a lot alike it's, it's like the raspiness, but also there's a little bit of a pitch there too. Mm-hmm. Like it's like an it's like a a curve of an like the pitch goes up at the end, not at the beginning or something. Yeah, I can hear it. It's nice. <laughs> okay, Jonathan Pierce says, whenever I know obscure facts, I feel the need to explain why I know it so people don't think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> um, I don't know that I feel the need to explain it, but I do find if I learn something new and I'm sharing it, I don't pass it off like this is something I knew. I'll say like, oh, yeah, I was reading something today or I just saw a video about this. Where's my husband? And this is not a Daniel bashing show, although this episode does seem that way. I feel like he just sneaks them in like like they're his own knowledge. He doesn't Mm. he doesn't cite his sources as much. (laughs) Interesting. I love a I love a quick fact, though. Anyone who has a fun fact, it's my it's my favorite. I do it all the time. But I do the same thing. I don't cite my sources. Don't. It's okay. usually just, I did not just hear this on a podcast right. 10 minutes ago. I'm trying to think. I studied up. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any fun facts I've accrued recently. Um, hmm, none are coming to mind. No. I probably, it's, mm, 
Damn it. Nope. Tony, fun fact? Got nothing. Oh, I feel like I'm the king of, of these, but uh, yeah, I feel now I'm on the spot, though. Uh, I think I brought this up on the show before, because then you you uh, like immediately knew who the name of the person I was talking about. Um, the same person wrote the theme song for Sesame oh, yeah. Street and Three's Company. Whoa. <laughs> Didn't Joe that. Raposo? That's yeah, Joe Raposo. Oh, we got to play our fun fact drop. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Where's where's my uh where are my manners? <laughs> that's a fun fact. There you go. That is Jackie Johnson. Good tones. Uh Connor, you were paired up with up with Jackie or against Jackie on Dave Holmes trivia show, right? Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, is it the Jackie Johnson whose podcast I'm going on potentially tomorrow? Oh, Natch Pute. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, she's great. She's great. So smart. Man, I so hope fun. I didn't scoop her with the info about your shampooing, conditioning, <laughs> and true. skincare. We didn't get too much into the skincare, though, so she can still get the exclusive. Uh, okay, Wendy. Who can upload first? What did you say? <laughs> Who can upload It'd first? Be a real it's a race. It's a real race. Um, this is on a set schedule. This will air Monday. However, it is rem- this is reminding me, and I'm wondering if you ever had a similar thing with anyone. When I lived in New York, I had a friend, and we would make videos together. And there really was like a race to see who could. I mean, I hate like admitting that. I think, but I think we even talked about it. There was this competition to upload faster. Have, did you ever have that with someone? Oh, it, it was, I'm glad that I don't really participate in the trendy, trendiness of, of content creation nowadays where like some, like, especially with TikTok where there's like a sound that's really hot mm-hmm. and people are making videos about it all day, every day. And then the sound's not hot the next day. It's a new one. But you no, know, there was definitely back in the day, it was more of like a, when someone would make a video, like one of those videos of like 10 things, guys hate the girls. Do. Right. Like that was the first person to ever make that video. So when people saw it doing well, everyone would be like, well, I got to do um 10 things that girls hate that guys mm-hmm. do. Or I got to do, it would spark this like revolution of people trying to fill in that category. Um, and I, I definitely heavily participated in that for a while. Yeah. That sounds stressful. Um, yeah. Okay, here's the last one. Wendy W. says, Headlights from oncoming traffic seem insanely bright these days. Are my eyes getting old or is the new regular the old high beams? Oh, interesting question. I do feel like maybe, I feel like maybe headlights are getting brighter. I've had that thought I'd before. imagine it's, I'd imagine it's something to do with the light bulbs. Yeah. I bet it's, they, prob- they probably have changed. They probably are brighter. Because some cars have daylights too. Do mine? I don't even know. Mine all just, they now they're all like automatic or, or a lot of like the newer cars, yeah. they just turn yes. on for you. So I don't even think about headlights anymore. Yes. They just do it. <laughs> uh, oh, here's a just mirror, everyone. Nothing makes me feel dumber than realizing that I accidentally turned on my high beams though and I've been driving around in like a parking structure with them just gl- blinding people. Definitely. It's... Yeah, shout out to my dad. He used to do that all the time. Yeah, it's a real parent thing. So I guess I could own it, but it's more of like a grandparent (laughs) thing. Connor, it was so nice having you on the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, Everyone, go out, buy House Fires. Again, I'm holding it up. Uh, I will put a link to it in the episode summary. Uh, But tell people where they – plug all your things. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's um yeah, my new book House Fires, it's out everywhere you can get books. Uh it's definitely a great holiday gift for anyone of all ages. You don't have to know me to enjoy it. Uh it's a lot of small takes on the very big world that we live in, so it's it's for everyone. And at the very least it's a pretty coffee table book. Um it is. and you can find it at connorfrantabooks.com or just follow me anywhere under Connor Frant. Nice. And if you like what you're hearing, please make sure you are subscribed so you get the episodes automatically. You don't miss anything. Um, Please leave us a nice comment on Apple Podcasts. It helps out the show, helps people find the show, etc. Follow me on social media at Allison Rosen on Twitter and Instagram. I am on Patreon as well. Bonus content. Episodes of The Friend Zone. There's a level where you can text me and I'll text you back. Uh, You can watch the Thursday show videos, communicate with me, be a part of a community of people. Uh, patreon.com slash Allison Rosen if you sign up for an annual subscription you get two months free 12 months for the price of 10 
Uh, and uh, I already said follow me. Yes, I already did all my things. Tony, what about you? Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at... Tony Thaxton and my podcast Bizarre Albums every Tuesday and get those Motion City soundtrack tickets if you haven't gotten them yet because if you live in the US we'll be coming somewhere near you in January or February wonderful Connor thank you so much this was so much fun listeners thank you for listening you matter I love you goodbye hey do you know about the Allison Rosen show Time, but now we gotta go.